Hello students, I am Sanjana Kavatiki, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, AITM, Belgavi. Let us continue with the video lectures on storage area networks. Let us study the next topic from module number 3 that is backup and archive. Uh, the topic is backup targets. We shall study in detail the backup targets. Backup targets. A wide range of technology solutions are currently available for backup targets. Tape and disk libraries are the two most commonly used backup targets. Backup target is nothing but it is a device to which you are going to store your backup data. Okay, that is the target device in which you are going to store the backup data. So, disk and uh, tape and disk libraries are the two most commonly used backup targets. So, in the past, tape technology was predominant target for backup due to its low cost. But performance and management limitations associated with the tapes uh, and the availability of low cost disk drives have made the uh, disk a viable backup target as an option okay so virtual tape library that is vtl virtual tape library is one of the options that uses disk as a backup medium vtl emulates tapes and provides enhanced backup and recovery capabilities uh, let us first understand the backup to a tape uh, tapes being a low cost solution are used extensively for backup tape drives are used to read or write data from or to a tape cartridge or it is also called as cassette okay uh, so tape drives are referred to as sequential or linear access drives uh, or devices because the data is written or read sequentially a tape cartridge is com uh, composed of magnetic tapes in a plastic enclosure so tape mounting is the process of inserting a tape cartridge into a tape drive okay so what is tape mounting it is the process of inserting the tape cartridge into a tape drive and the tape drive has motorized controls to move the magnetic tapes around uh, enabling the head to read or write the data so the tapes will be moving around uh, magnetic tapes will be moving around which has the motorized control over the tape drive okay so this will enable the head 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 of the tape to read or write the data so there are several types of cartridges available they vary in size capacity uh, shape density tape length tape thickness tape tracks and uh, supported speed these are the various uh, uh, attributes you can say in which uh, these tape cartridges are available physical tape library uh, the physical tape library provides housing and power for a large number of tape drives and tape cartridges along with the robotic arm or picker mechanism so the backup software has the intelligence to manage the robotic arm and the entire backup process you can see in the figure it shows a physical tape library on the left side we have a front view on the right side we have the back view so you can see in the front view uh, here it is showing the drives different tape drives okay and uh, uh, the, these are the cartridges okay and then we have import or export mailbox okay and there is a linear robotic system you can see uh, there is an arm like structure which is nothing but the linear robotic system now coming to uh, back view uh, you can see the power systems here and uh, server class main controller okay uh, this is the controller part and then we have io management unit okay and uh, it is showing the drives here on the back side how the drives will look like on the front view how the drives will look like you can see the difference tape drives read and write data from and to a tape so tape drive will read or write the data into a or from a tape and tape cartridges are placed in the slots when not in use by the tape drive so the robotic arms are used to move tapes between cartridge slots and the tape drives so what is the function of robotic arm here it is 
it will move the tapes between cartridge slots and the tape drives mail or import export slots are used to add or remove the tapes from the library without opening the access doors okay so uh, this you can see it in the front view as i've already explained so uh, when a backup process starts the robotic arm is instructed to load a tape to a tape drive so this process adds delay to a degree depending on the type of the hardware used but it generally takes 5 to 10 seconds to mount a tape so after this tape is mounted additional time is spent to position the heads and validate the header information always the data will be uh, written or read from the head itself okay so additional time will be spent in positioning the head and validating the header information so this time is called load or ready time and it can vary from several seconds to minutes so the tape drive receives backup data and stores the data in the internal buffer okay so this backup data is then written to the tape in a, in blocks so during this process it is best to ensure that the tape drive is kept busy continuously to prevent gaps between the blocks so this will be accomplished by buffering the data on the tape drives so the speed of the tape drives can also be adjusted to match the data transfer rates tape drives streaming or multiple streaming writes the data from multiple streams onto a single tape to keep the drive busy as shown in figure uh, multiple streaming improves media performance but it has an associated disadvantage the backup data is interleaved because data from multiple stream is written on it so con consequently the data recovery time will be increased because all the extra data from the other streams must be read and discarded when recovering a single stream so what happens if we are allowing multiple streams to, to write onto the same tape what is the disadvantage is it can be done but what is the disadvantage is while uh, reading the data what will happen it will read all the data from all different streams and then it will discard the unwanted data so there is a wastage of time here so that is uh, what is the uh, disadvantage associated with this because it is going to spend extra time in reading unnecessary data and then discarding it so many times uh, you can see this in the figure uh, the different shades are marked with the different data stream coming from the different sources so this is an entire single tape okay so many times even uh, the buffering and speed adjustment features of a tape drive fail to prevent the gaps causing the shoe shining effect or back hitching so just remember uh, what is shoe shining effect so even the buffering and speed adjustment features that are available on the tape drive it will fail to prevent the gaps which causes shoe shining effect and back hitching so shoe shining it is a it is the repeated back and forth motion uh, a tape drive makes when there is an interruption in the backup data stream so it is a back and forth motion of the tape drive which is going to happen whenever there is an interruption in the backup data stream for example if a storage node sends data slower than the tape drive writes into the tape the drive periodically stops and wait for the data to catch up so after the drive determines that there is enough data to start writing again it rewinds to the exact place where the last write took place and then it will continue from that particular place so this repeated back and forth motion not only causes a degradation of service but also excessive wear and tear to tapes it is going to cause physical wear and tear to tapes because there is a back and forth motion continuously happening to adjust the place like where it had stopped previously and then it should come back and start from that particular place itself Okay, so it is going to cause more mechanical or physical wear and tear to the tapes so when the tape operation finishes the tape rewinds to the starting position and it is then unmounted so the robotic arm is then instructed to move the unmounted tape back to the slot so the re rewind time can range from again several seconds to several minutes so when a restore is initiated uh, the backup software identifies which tapes are required 
the robotic arm is instructed to move the tape from its slot to a tape drive. If the required tape is not found in the tape library, the backup software displays a message saying uh, or instructing the operator to manually insert the required tape in the tape library. When this is not going to happen, it will give an error message or it will display a message uh, instructing the operator to insert, it the, insert the tape manually. Uh, so when a file or a group of files require restores the tape must move to that file location sequentially before it can start trading so this process can take a significant amount of time especially if the required files are recorded at the end of the tape so modern tape drives or modern tape devices have an indexing mechanism that enables a tape to be fast forwarded to a location near the required data. So the tape drive then uh, fine tunes the tape position to get that particular data. So however before adopting a solution that uses this mechanism one should consider the benefits of data streaming performances versus the cost of writing an index. Uh, limitations of tape there are some limitations associated with the tapes so tapes are primarily used for long-term offsite storage because of their low cost so tapes must be stored in locations with a controlled environment to ensure preservation of the media and to prevent data corruption so data access in tape is sequential which can slow backup and recovery operations tapes are highly susceptible to wear and tear and usually have a shorter shelf life so physical transportation of the tapes to offsite locations also adds to management overhead and increase the possibility of loss of tapes during the offsite shipment. Next we shall see backup to a disk. So because of increased availability and low cost, disks have now replaced the tapes as the primary device for storing backup data because of their performance advantages so backup to disk systems offer ease of implementation reduced tco and improved quality of service so apart from performance benefits in terms of data transfer rates disks also offer faster recovery when compared to tapes so backing up to disk storage systems offers clear advantages due to their inherent random access and rate protection capabilities so along with the disk we have the rate protection capabilities but whereas in case of tapes we did not have this so inherently the disk have some associated benefits uh, so in most backup environments backup to disk is used as a staging the area where the data is copied temporarily before transferring or staging it into tapes so this enhances backup performance some backup products allow for backup images to remain on the disk for a period of time even after they have been staged. So this enables a much faster restore. You can see the figure that illustrates a recovery scenario comparing tape versus disk in a Microsoft Exchange environment that supports 800 users with a 75 MB of mailbox size and a 60 GB of database. Can see in the figure a restore from the uh, disk took 24 minutes compared to the restore from a tape which took 108 minutes for the same environment you can see uh, the recovery time in terms of minutes we have disk as a uh, disk backup or a, as a store uh, as a restore and uh, next is the tape backup and recovery from the tape so in case of disk it takes 24 minutes whereas in case of tape it tapes it will take one or eight minutes for the same scenario so recovering from a full backup copy uh, stored onto disk and kept on site provides a faster recovery solution so using a disk enables the creation of full backups more frequently which in turn improves rpo and rto these two terms we have already studied in the previous videos okay uh, so backup to disk does not offer any inherent offset capability and is independent on the other technologies such as local and remote replication so in addition some backup products require additional modules and licenses to support backup to disk 
which may also require additional configuration steps including creation of raid groups and file system tuning so these activities are not usually performed by a backup administrator uh, now let us see the back virtual tape so virtual tapes are disk drives emulated and presented as tapes to the backup software the key benefit of using a virtual tape is that it does not require any additional modules, configuration or changes in the C backup software. So this preserves the investment made in the backup software. So that is the main advantage of using the virtual tape. So let us understand virtual tape library that is VTL. It has the same components as that of a physical tape library except that the majority of the components are represented as a virtual resources here that is why it is called as virtual tape library so for the backup software there is no difference between a physical tape library and a virtual tape library only in case of a uh, resources or components you can say uh, in the physical it will be physical components in virtual tape library it will be virtual component so virtual tape libraries use disk as the backup media emulation software has a database with a list of virtual tapes and each virtual tape is assigned space on a LAN. Uh, just see the figure uh, here we have backup server or storage node which is connected to virtual uh, tape library appliance okay through the FC SAN and also this backup server is connected to backup clients with the LAN okay uh, so uh, here you can see uh, we have emulation engine in virtual tape library appliance we have emulation engine and various LANs okay so emulation software has the database these are all databases in the emulation engine these uh, disk type structures these are all databases with a list of virtual tapes and each virtual tape is assigned to a space on the LAN okay you can see there are different shades that have been marked in the emulation engine and these virtual tapes have been assigned with the LANs you can see the shaded part on the LANs there are three different shades one is uh, darker and the other two are little lighter than this one so these three represents these emulation engine okay or virtual tapes in the emulation engine they have been allocated space on the lens okay so virtual tape can span multiple lens if it if it requires so file system awareness is not required while backing up because the virtual tape solution typically uses raw devices Similar to a physical tape library, a robot mount is virtually performed when a backup process starts in a virtual tape library. However, unlike a physical tape library where this process involves some mechanical delays, in a virtual tape library it, it is almost instantaneous. Even the load to ready time is much less than a, in a physical tape library. Okay, so after the virtual tape is mounted and the virtual tape drive is positioned, the virtual tape is ready to be used and the backup data can be written to it. In most cases, data is written to the virtual tape immediately. So unlike a physical tape library, the virtual tape library is not constrained by the sequential access and shoe shining effect. Okay, shoe shining effect we have studied previously. So just recall that so when the operation is complete the backup software issues a rewind command so this rewind is also instantaneous uh, the virtual tape is then unmounted and the virtual robotic arm is instructed to move it back to a virtual slot so the steps to restore uh, the data are also same like uh, in a physical tape li library but the restore operation is nearly instantaneous so even though virtual tapes are based on disks which provide random access, they still emulate the uh, tape behavior. So virtual tape library appliance offers a number of features that are not available with the physical tape libraries. Uh, like some of the virtual tape libraries offer multiple emulation engines configured on an active cluster configuration. So an engine uh, is a dedicated server with a customized operating system that makes physical disk in the VTL appear as tapes to the backup application. So with this feature, one engine can pick up the virtual resources from another engine in the event of any failure 
and enable the clients to continue using their assigned virtual resources transparently. So this is about backup thing to a virtual tape. We shall continue further concepts in the next video. Thank you for watching.